and then it automatically loads. If the gun has 20 rounds, that's 20 chances for you to save your life. Yeah, Austin trainings on YouTube. I've been training people for quite some time now, so I figured I'd just convert it, put it on YouTube yeah, and yeah. get more exposure. So yeah, they have guns up here. They've been selling out some stuff every time I come in here. Is there a big reason for all the shortages and stuff? I know there will be in November. Yep. You know? <laughs> Once November hits, man, if you don't have what you need, then you're you're kind of out of luck I, I don't have a conceal all i got is like my gun at home for protection it's really just like a, a family heirloom that was given to me from like hunting like a shotgun and stuff like that so if i'm like fresh like what would you recommend for me if like i want to start a family soon i just need something that's like reliable something that i know is not going to jam like when somebody comes through it's, it's got a little distance so like if i'm in the back of the house i can get them from the front like anything like that so uh my buddy T and I, we did a video, how to choose your first gun correctly. When I say eat everything, like you're gonna put whatever ammo in there, you're gonna press the trigger, it's gonna cycle, you're gonna press the trigger again, and it's gonna keep cycling, it's gonna work. I always tell people, like I told T in the video, get a handgun first. Mm -hmm. Because you can't just you know put a shotgun in a holster no. or an AR-15 in a holster. No. Could something happen at home? Yeah. But is something more than likely to happen out in the street? Mm -hmm. Probably so. You ever take my fault, bro? So at least you can carry it with you outside, but also defend them at home too. Because I can maneuver with a pistol in the house or out of the house, and it's more concealable. Like I'm carrying right now, but you know, people probably didn't know that until I just told them. FN. These are all a thousand. Sig and FN think very highly of themselves as far as pricing. That would be like the standard price. I would say to expect to pay 600. I'd buy that for $600. dollars so are like, if it's a new person who hasn't yet bought a gun, we shoot on the range. After we get done shooting, we come over here and just get our hands on a bunch of stuff. It's fresh in their mind. They can feel the trigger, feel how it feels in their hand, see if they like the sights, the grip. Is it too big for their hand? Is it too small? And that helps them with their uh, selection process. This is a SIG P210 chambered in 9mm so it has seven round capacity. I typically want double digits. In a, in a full-size gun I'd say it's around 17 to 20. My SIG P365 holds 12. I found one. It can also hold 10 in a smaller magazine, but I carry the 12 rounder. You just never know, man. Nobody gets into a self-defense situation. They're like, oh, I had all these extra bullets. I, I didn't even need them, so I'm not going to use those. Anyway, like, if the gun has 20 rounds, that's 20 chances for you to save your life. Is your favorite in here somewhere? My favorite is actually at home. It's a Glock 19X. What makes her your favorite? It yeah. just feels good. It just feels it good. Just, it just feels good, man. Well, they got the Western fit out here too, man. That's just got to be like a preference. If you really got the revolver, that's not going to do you any good. Yeah. It's just, that's just pleasure. The thing is heavy, bro. Yeah. It's like a 50 caliber, man. That's what it feels like. It feels it's like- It's a 44 I'm, mag. It's 44 think, magnum. Come on now. Yeah, it's like- no gun safety. I was probably pointing at people. But it's dry, right? It's yeah. always loaded. It's always yeah. loaded. It's always, always loaded. Seven yards. Have you uh, ever had to like use your weapon in a pressure situation? Yeah, uh, there was one situation that I spoke about. So I lived downtown. There was a retired police detective I used to work with. One of his buddies told me 70% of criminal attacks involve three to five criminals. Because people work together. Mm -hmm. Nobody's really working by mm -hmm. themselves. I was like, man, that's crazy. And then one day I came back home. I was just thinking about, you know, I'm about to fix something to eat. And then I got this and that to do tomorrow. And I got out the car, I never sit in the car, especially at night, and I saw them moving. They were like 20 yards away. Those three dudes, they had, you know, hood up, black hoodies, and ski mask on. The shysties? Yeah, yeah, the pooch. <laughs> the shysties. <laughs> the hey, look, shysties. man. Hey, there's a reason they banned them things in Chicago, boy. Oh, just, yeah. I don't care. You can have them in <laughs> pink, green, purple. If you got a pooch shysty on in any color, it's just a menacing look. But what was, what was crazy was there's this phrase that a lot of people who train use, which is you never rise to the occasion, you rise to your lowest level of training. Mm -hmm. 
and that was true. They were moving towards me. I knew they weren't coming to read me the word of God. So I had my SIG P365. I felt my heart do. So I, I drew my gun, started moving at an angle for various, you know, like tactical reasons. But I moved at an angle, got really loud. My finger was on the wall of the trigger. I started yelling a lot of profane language. Once they saw the gun, they all turned and ran. So I didn't shoot because I'm not in a hurry to kill anybody. But even though I was moving fast and aggressive, on the inside, I was like, oh. Man, y'all don't want like yeah, you know, yeah, I was just yeah, relaxed. Yeah, 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 I was yeah, like yeah. extremely relaxed. Mm -hmm. I don't even really know how to describe it. It's, it's weird. Like the adrenaline dump affects people differently. And my front sight on my gun, you know, the front sight's like this big, mm -hmm. like tip of my finger here. Mm -hmm. I remember it looking this big because it's a bright green front sight mm -hmm. under stress. It was all mm -hmm. I could see. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Looks crazier than it is. So you got four rules of gun safety. Everybody has a slightly different order. I just easily remembered as you always want to treat the gun as if it's loaded. You want to keep your finger off the trigger until you've acquired your sights and made the decision to fire. Some people try to argue that. They're like, oh no, you're not actually going to see your sights every time. Bro, keep your finger off the trigger. The third one is you don't want to point it at anything you're not willing to destroy. Like we don't point knives at people. And fourth is you want to know your target and what's beyond it because bullets go through things. Mm -hmm especially, you know, like full metal jacket or target ammo, range ammo, that type of stuff. People break those. I'll check the gun before I even hand it to them. And when I'm, you know, telling them about grip, that finger goes right to the trigger. Or, you know, like if my hand's the gun, you're the buddy and he's like, yeah, but uh, so I'm looking right here. It says Glock 19. It's like, bro, you're pointing it at your friend, man. You know, you got to be mindful <laughs> no, of that. People are just absent-minded. They're just so like dumbfounded by what's in like in front of them. And yeah, stuff. people either get training from Hollywood or they get training from somebody who knows what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. But either way, they're getting trained. Yeah, so yeah, like yeah. they're coming in after seeing, you know, the Expendables or, or Rambo or yeah, something. Yeah. They think it's easy. There was a lady I was working with. She came to me. She was like, hey, um, I have my ex-husband's credit card and I guess we need uh two AR-15s, maybe a shotgun, maybe a few handguns. I mean, what would you recommend? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I was like, have you shot a gun at all before? And she was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's like, all right. You said her ex-husband's ex-husband's oh, no. credit card. What's going on? Yeah, I got so many questions. Yeah, she bought an AR-15 that day. So you have something, but before you buy a handgun, we need to do a lesson. And then when she shot the handgun, she's like, "Oh my gosh!" I was like, "Yeah, it's a bomb. <laughs> like, you know, like, it's a literal bomb going off in your hands that you're trying to control. This isn't, you know, some nah. Brad Pitt movie. Yeah, it's got some thump to it. Yeah, nah. it's, it's real. And mm -hmm. people don't." They don't really understand that until they feel it. Well, good evening. In less than 48 hours, permitless carry passed. That means pretty much everyone 21 and older is allowed to, to carry a handgun or an unloaded long gun in public. Tonight, an armed man causes a panic, sending a nearby preschool and elementary school into lockdown. But Memphis police say walking with an assault style rifle is legal and the man did nothing wrong. So how did we get here? It doesn't matter. I got another video on that. Why you need a concealed carry permit right now? Because my class got audited by the state and the state came in and was like, people need to get this because of all of these reasons. And they watched my class, they graded me, you know, they sat in the back and, you know, didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. We have constitutional carry. It's legally called permitless carry. It just depends who's on your case. The judge might be anti-gun, but the jury probably will be because they're going to be like, oh, I saw that in Rambo. You're a school shooter. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> you know, Good. I wish it was, I can go in, buy me a AR-15, put a suppressor on it, same day, walk out, carry it around my, you know, body. God bless America. I wish it was that pure, but it's not. It's, it's like, like a lot of song and dance. So I still tell people, like, get the permit. Get it, cover your butt. 95% of people who have the permit look more favorable than people who don't. True. Mm, true. Yeah. That makes sense. So if you were to conceal it, what would you consider the best place to consider because like you got a lot of people that like to put it in the back some people to carry it on the side like a bluetooth phone or something like that yeah. you got some people that think they're old cowboys and want to hold it on the yep like sheriffs and stuff so. man people gonna be in the comments oh carry wherever you want yeah. i personally prefer like appendix carry mm. uh, and that's what we talk about uh, mahari and i and concealed carry tips you need to know we both like carrying at the front because our eyes are in front of us if i got a gun sticking out back here and it's printing through my shirt and i'm you know buying a pack of chewing gum and there's somebody casing the place and he sees this imprint of this big 1911 in my back he might you know push me onto the table and grab the gun i didn't even see it happening yeah true but i know guys who carry like at the four o'clock right here depending on what i'm wearing i might put it at four o'clock temporarily and i still train to you know defeat the garment and grab and 
you know, present the gun? Where am I going to feel the most comfortable carrying this on a day to day basis? Mm -hmm. And then whatever you decide, just like train. People kind of get tore up about these being called semi-autos. So they're like, oh, it's a semi-auto. You know, they give all this inflection in the news, but the auto part stands for auto loading. So when I press the trigger, the gun goes off, the slide reciprocates, extracts and ejects the shell casing, and then it automatically loads the new one from the magazine. Mm -hmm. Then I have to press the trigger again. Yeah. It's an auto loading mechanism, but it doesn't, does it's it make it like more auto, evil? Yeah, it's not like automatic, automatic. Yeah, not like the ones that the gang members yeah, yeah. have. I saw that. Oh, that's the mobster. That's right. But yeah, and they got HKs. Yeah. If, if the world ends in November, though, I'm grabbing my Glock. I'm going to buy a whole bunch of other guns because it's cool. It's engineering. It's science. It's just like, you know, collecting Pokemon cards. Do they sell silencers in here? Yeah. So you got them right here. Ah, uh, that's like another gun now. They're they're expensive. Are they hard to maintain? Like they like break and stuff? No, but it's it's a pain in the butt to get it. You gotta fill out all this extra paperwork, pay tax stamps, and it's gonna sit in suppressor jail for however many months. I'm a big advocate for suppressors because if you shoot a gun in the house, like it's loud. Yeah, it is. I was pulling a, a rifle off of me and the sling like lifted up my ear pro and exposed my ear and somebody shot a rifle next to me and I was like, holy smoke. This is all about safety. I believe it's England. They're super anti-gun, but I mean, you can buy a suppressor like you buy a bag of Skittles. If you're allowed to shoot guns here, suppress that because we don't want to hear it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, be a gentleman and suppress yeah. it. You know, because you, know, you got to think if you're shooting indoors or something and you got, you know, kids and wife or or whatever like that's the noise is going to traumatize yeah. at least look into potentially getting a suppressor at some point and suppressing it some people would argue against it whatever also you get a pen you can just write a t on their forehead and the time you applied the tourniquet oh wait uh, tourniquets this tourniquet's 32 bucks a guy no name paul he teaches a uh, a tourniquet class and I always tell people that you want to learn how to use a tourniquet like correctly you know take take some classes get comfortable with the gun then go learn how to use a tourniquet and have you know several at home keep one in your car or, or whatever, because most people die from bleeding out. Mm. Just to know how to strap that on, turn the windlass rod and, you know, save yourself from bleeding out is mm. like crucial. There's uh, things that you like know are necessities to have. You said, obviously it's a tourniquet. Would you say anything else? Yeah, an IFAC individual first aid kit. Mm -hmm. I would get that and, you know, take a class at a gun range if they offer it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, before you even get involved with that, you can easily just knock out a quick tourniquet thing. You could probably look at a YouTube video mm -hmm. showing you how to put that tourniquet on. Practice putting it on yourself, feel how tight it is and how bad it hurts. Mm -hmm. And then practice putting it on, you know, a buddy so you can practice putting it on somebody. You could save somebody else's life just by having a tourniquet. Exactly. Everybody doesn't need to be shot. You know? No, no. Yeah. Some people yeah. need to be saved. Yeah. 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 I love that. Hey, man. Well, thanks again for all everything. Yeah. Man. Love it, man. you, man. Love you. Yeah. Love you too, bro. Yo, what's good? What's good? It's your boy King Chang Lang. Sorry I wasn't here, but uh, hey, don't worry, don't fret. We got some exclusive content, yeah. an extended interview yep. um, that my boy JoJo did with Austin. Go check it out. Patreon, just a step-by-step -step process he went through to get to where he is. And I'm telling you right now, you're going to want to listen to it. Like, I just legit woke up and wanted to shoot. <laughs> that, was <laughs> it. That, that was it. That was it. Yes, sir. So anybody looking to, you know, expand their brand, learn some things, or even just learn some stuff about some firearms. I'm telling y'all, go to that Patreon, click that thing. Y'all are not gonna wanna miss this. Exactly.